Okay, so I think it's uh, time to start the lecture. So I'll, uh, nobody is studying to WebEx, so I'll close that. Uh, and uh, I'm really sorry for the situation developing. So I know you, you guys have to be moving out uh, uh, next week. So um, to make things easier, I think I uh, postponed the due date of the uh, homework to the end of uh, next week instead. And uh, we'll also reschedule the oral midterm uh, to basically the week after uh, the spring break. All right. And uh, uh, this lecture is going to be recorded and also our future lecture is going to be recorded. I will try to process the videos uh, and uh, 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 Corey is actually helping processing the videos and uh, we'll try to process the video in a more timely manner so that uh, if you can't uh, uh, join the lecture, you can still watch uh, the videos on, online. So let me see, how do I get rid of this? Okay, so we'll continue from our lecture on Monday. So on Monday, we demonstrated that uh, if we use finite difference, to solve a partial differential equation like this. So we looked at uh, the partial derivative of u to time plus u times du dx equal to zero. So we were trying to solve this now nonlinear partial differential equation. The only difference between this differential equation and uh, what we solved before is that before this du dx, we have u, which is actually the solution instead of a constant. We know that if the equation is du dt plus a constant times du dx equal to zero, right? So that's what we solved before. And we know uh, the solution to this equation is just a function that basically moves towards the right or the left depending on the sign of a. So if we draw x as the x-axis and the t as the y-axis, we know that if we have a certain function at time zero, so if we are able to draw the contour of this function, we know the contours basically keeps moving towards a fixed direction. And if we have periodic boundary condition, everything moves out of the domain, just comes back from the other side of the domain. So something like this would be a contour of the solution. But if we have u here instead of a, what would the solution be like? Do anybody remember what the solution is going to be if we have a u here as opposed to a constant a? It forms a shockwave. Yeah, it forms a shockwave, but before it forms a shockwave, uh, by the way, uh, I know like uh, it seems uh, Josh and Chris has dialed in. It'll be great. Uh, you don't have to show your face, but it'll be great uh, if you can unmute yourself uh, so that you can answer questions and talk. Is that fine? Okay, good. Chris seems to have unmuted. Uh, Josh? Okay, maybe Josh is not even here. Uh, anyway, okay, right. So uh, let me make this small. Okay, we know that uh, uh, even before the shockwave forms, now if we draw the same diagram of X and T, and uh, uh, remember last time we have a sinusoidal function to start with. So let me maybe uh, we'll run the MATLAB code again, uh, back from the last lecture in the finite difference. And uh, uh, let me just uh, come back to our original initial condition. Okay, uh, just a sine function. And uh, let's evolve the equation for a short period of time. And uh, let's see how the solution would go. I hope the video quality is good enough for you to actually see the animation. I can see it pretty well right now. Okay. Okay, good. So let me run the code. Uh, we sh should see a window popping up, right? And uh, that's the initial condition. And uh, it starts to move. Uh, I think it's my computer being very slow. All right. 
So that uh, do do you see uh, the solution moving in real time? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Good. Yes. Okay. Cool. So so now uh, you've seen how the solution evolves from an uh, initial sinusoidal wave to a solution like this. Going back to our x and t diagram, basically when t is equal to zero the contour would be something like this, right? The solution would be zero. Uh, it would be zero here, zero here, zero here, and uh, the solution would be one here, zero here, zero here, would be minus one here and zero here, right? And uh, if you track the contour of the solution in the XT diagram, can somebody try to describe to me how the contour would look like if after a certain amount of time, let's say at this time, the solution has become like what we see on the screen. How do you think the contour would be like? Mm 